Easy Fluence gives you the ability to manually edit the fluence. You'll notice if you look at this fluence pattern carefully that some of the the pixels are longer in the you know, up-down direction than others. The reason is this is actually a Millennium MLC, so you have half a centimeter leaves and then one centimeter leaves out towards the edge of the field. Uh, this is a you know, three-field plan, so you have a you know a nice center up at the top. Uh, so uh, Easy Fluence is editing you know, the Fluence and actually all of its optimization. It's all physical based Fluence patterns, so uh, it's, it doesn't have a, a consistent resolution in the Y direction due to that. Um, but in any case, what you can do with Easy Fluence is you can actually paint the dose directly on here. See, if, I, if you don't like how hot it is over here, just watch me make it get cooler. So how did I do that? So basically what you can do, and I'm going to undo all of it, we can undo any of these edits that we're going to show you by pressing, holding Control Z or pressing Control Z, redo with Control Y. So in any case, uh, what you can do is you hold down either Control or Alt as you're hovering over the CT slices. Um, control comes from the left side of the screen and Alt comes from the right side of the screen. Uh, so whatever field it is, you know, it doesn't correspond to which fluence pattern is first. It's all a matter of what side of the screen it is. So it's kind of it should be fairly intuitive. You know, it's on the right side of your hand to push the Alt button, um, and then the left side of your hand to push the Control button. So left side of the screen, right side of the screen. So as soon as you've identified a place that you want to edit, um, say yeah, we want to make this cooler, then it's also it's, you hold down the button that you uh, for the uh, Control or Alt for the fluence you want to edit, so the side you want to edit, and then you either press the left mouse button to decrease the dose, and you can click and drag like that, or the right mouse button to increase the dose. It's really that simple. So let's let's do it from the other side, and you can see that this uh, this red line bounds the uh, the pixels, the fluence pixels that you've actually edited. I should point out, so I am increasing the dose now. I should point out that uh, this CT slice view. Um, you see how when I scroll up and down, it actually is scrolling through fluence slices, uh, slices through this fluence map. So this fluence map, if you actually were to draw out the physical representation of this row of fluence pixels, you'd have a fan that uh, traverses the patient, and that's what the, this projection is. This isn't a transverse slice, um, unless of course, if you see, watch the Plan Some video, there's a way that you can make it be a transver transverse slice, so you can you know look at a match line. But um, in any case, it's not a transverse slice. It's actually the best view you can get to edit a particular row of flu fluence pixels because you can see the effect of making an edit all the way through the patient. If this was a transverse slice and there was some beam divergence, especially here at the edge of the beam, what you'd get is you'd edit this fluence, uh, these fluence intensities, and you'd see the effect of that disappear a little bit into the, the, uh, the field. So that's uh, that's something to be aware of, but it's actually, I think, a really useful view for editing fluence. You can also edit directly on the fluence map itself. And in fact, a nice view here is this beam's eye view max dose. It shows you the max dose encountered by each of these fluence rays. So if you click here without holding down Control or Alt, it'll just select the fluence pixel and show you the ray on the CT slice uh, where that fluence pixel traverses through the patient. Now, if we set this to 107, for example, or let's do 106. Um, so you can see 106 was the, the, our max allowed hotspot. So you can see where it was allowed to go almost to 106. If we go to 105, you can see that it, uh, 105 is, is a lot more common. Now, if you wanted to reduce the hotspot in this particular point, you can hold down Control. Alt doesn't actually affect anything as far as this fluence is concerned. It only affects you know editing on this side or that side in the image. So control is is your key to editing. So you hold down control and then again it's uh, left click to reduce the fluence, right click to increase the fluence. So you can see I'm going back and forth, and uh, that's all there is to it. So you can of course click and drag. You can um, yeah, that's all you can do. <laughs> so anyway. Um, the uh, other thing you can do that's kind of neat on Easy Fluence is that you can, uh, if you, for example, notice, of course, you can edit on the Beams IV Max view or the Fluence view. Um, if you, for example, you knew that on several slices you wanted to increase the dose, say you want more dose here in the breast, but all throughout. So what you can do is edit those Fluence pixels. Come out. You can come out all the way to the flash if you want. And then while you're while you're still holding down as if you were going to drag some more, move your mouse wheel up 
or down. So every time you move up, you see on the right hand side over there that fluence, how it, I'm basically increasing the fluence all the way and then I'm going to scroll back down. So you can just scroll up and down to increase fluence more and more for those slices. Obviously uh, we've made a big mess of everything so I'm going to hold down Control Z and uh, undo everything. You didn't see a lot of those updates did you? But anyway, um, so we're back to where we were. So that's uh, that's editing in Easy Fluence. Now suppose that I, I now want to make some edits. So I've increased the dose here and then I generate a field in field. You'll notice something that happened right here. Ecomp, manual edit. So it actually created a snapshot of the manual edits you made before it did anything that would change the, the results. Um, so you can always go back to it. So it gave us a warning that the X jaw was uh, so big that the MLCs couldn't move across it. So that can affect how good the optimization is, uh, and if it gives you some options, some alternatives, you know, ecomp is electronic compensator is certainly something to consider if you didn't like the results um, of your uh, of your field and field in those scenarios. But in any case, uh, easy fluence also I should mention will try to move the jaws, and then if it if it deems it necessary to get a good dose distribution in such a scenario. And then it will ask you if you want to also run it on a field and field without uh, locking or with locking the jaws. And so you basically have two uh, snapshots to compare where the jaws moved and the jaws didn't move. Um, so you can have one that can be merged and one that might not be able to be merged because of the field, uh, the MLC leaf constraints. Um, anyway, uh, so we've got our field and field, and you can see we can go back to our manual edit where we had made these adjustments right here um, easily. And you can see the field and field took those adjustments into its optimization and so it uh, generated that that extra piece. So uh, now that's, uh, that's fluence editing in Easy Fluence. I want to show field and field editing. So you can actually say you didn't like this dose being too hot here at the front of the breast, which you know makes sense. So you can actually do the exact same type of edits so I'm going to hold down this left uh, control and press the left mouse button. Now you see, see what's happening is it actually is reducing the monitor units that go through that aperture, but there's consequences throughout the field. You can see that on the on the right hand side, where it is going to affect the dose for the rest of the field. The cool thing about it is is that Easy Fluent. So let's find a different spot that isn't quite so such a crazy location to, to edit. Obviously we, we uh, made this kind of goofy thing happen. Let's say you, you wanted it to be a little bit hotter right here in the breast, right? So while you're holding down control, you notice that it highlights over here the the pixel that it's going to edit. What happens is easy as you edit that, it actually will, and let's look at it in the field segments view, it will take monitor units away when I when I decrease dose there. It's taking monitor units away from this aperture, but the second aperture, which is going to be somewhat smaller than the first, it's going to put those monitor units on that aperture. So you see it's it's going to basically move those monitor units around. Um, and in that way, it really limits the effect of this edit to whatever the difference between these two apertures is. Um, which is, uh, which is uh, makes a lot of sense actually for editing field and fields. It's essentially reweighting your field and fields a little bit. And as you can see, it's about one monitor unit per click. It's uh, actually one percent of the total monitor units for the for the field. But that's how you can do some uh, field and field editing. So suppose you you can use do it on the beams eye view, just like the uh, fluence editing. So if you wanted to, you know, uh, increase dose here or decrease dose there, you know, you have the ability to do that and on the fluence map, it's kind of nice with the fluence map with the field and field. You can kind of get a picture of what all the apertures look like all in one picture. Um, but say you you think it's too hot up here, let's uh, cool that off. Or I'm sorry, I was clicking the wrong direction. So anyway, you have some ability to to move things around. You can't move it too far though. So if I were to increase dose here too much. It would say aperture intensity would drop below negative uh, because, and I'm stealing monitor units from from this uh, aperture, and we don't we can't let it go below zero. So there is a limit to how far you can swing things like that, but uh, that is a, a way that you can, if you're not quite satisfied with the results, especially in the tip of the breast, for example, that's a way that you can tweak it. 
Finally, there's one more thing I wanted to show you. Suppose you generate a field and field and it has a, a long tail. Um, and you don't like that, obviously. And especially because uh, easy fluence will force the max dose to be uh, within 1% of what the electronic compensator. I, I use this electronic compensator to generate this. Um, or I'm sorry, it was this one right here. So 105%, I generated the field and field and it produced this 106%. Uh, it won't. It will always be within one percent, but because of this long tail, it pushed the uh, coverage down. Uh, so, so uh, first thing I'd suggest doing is looking at this alternate field and field B. You can see it looked like in this one that uh, field and field B didn't have such a long tail. Now, one of the things about field and field B that you have to be aware of is it doesn't strictly enforce. It, it tries to enforce it, but not strictly, this min modern units per field segment. So you see there's three modern units in these fields. Um, so that might not be ideal for you. And when you try to export it, it will warn you of that. So you always know if it's doing it. But, you know, maybe it's uh, worth taking one. I mean, the, the, uh, the error, uh, the linearity error, at uh, three modern units is for most linear accelerators is very very low, so I, it's something to to consider. But um, in any case, f uh, field and field A does strictly enforce it, and which might be part of the reason. So it is four modern units for all of them. It might be part of the reason why this tail suddenly appeared. So what do you do? So there is something you can do. What I'd suggest is going to your uh, beam's eye view max and going to something near the hot spot. So you can see that these these points are where the the uh, the tail is is being caused and you uh, in, in subsequent versions of easy fluence we're going to be looking into better uh, leaf specific editing tools so you could just cover it up and even some automated tools but in this version there is something you can do if you click on where you want to edit so you your marker is left there then click on your ecomp um, fluence pattern now, if I actually hold down control and left click to reduce the dose, just in those spots that that, uh, that there was an issue, so now my fluence pattern, you see it's a little bit cooler right there, that can basically jumpstart the the field and field algorithm to, to not put so much dose there uh, and possibly to cover it up with a leaf. And we'll see what the results are here in a second. So it looks like the tail is significantly better. The old field and field A, it went out, well, probably about a percent. So again, that's uh, something that you can do if you weren't quite satisfied with, uh, with the results. So again, these are all tools that hopefully you don't have to use because EasyFluence generally should do a good job. But uh, if you see something you don't like, these are the, the tools in your toolkit to, to fix it and hopefully fix it quickly and without too much trouble.